Can you imagine self-driving Indy cars racing at 200 miles per hour? That's what happens at the Indy Autonomous Challenge. Today we go under the hood with the key organizers of the event to discuss advancing technology for autonomous vehicles on this episode of All Things Automotive. Go on a cloud innovation journey with me, Stefano Marzani, as I'm joined by guest experts and mobility leaders to look at the drivers of transformation on all things automotive. Welcome, and I'm so glad you are here. So, Paul, what's the Indy Autonomous Challenge? Why we have still a challenge between self-driving cars after 15 years from the DARPA Grand Challenge? What needs to be explored yet? So we wanted to build on the legacy of the DARPA Grand Challenge and harness the power of prize competitions to really accomplish three goals. First, to accelerate the advancement of autonomous technology, to attract the best and brightest minds from top universities around the world that, that competed in this competition, and to win hearts and minds by using uh, the platform of motorsports that people can get excited about to get people really thinking about the future of autonomous vehicles. DARPA was a good start, but it also was focused on low-speed automation. Yeah. And the Indy Autonomous Challenge is very much focused on high-speed automation, yeah. which is a key uh, opportunity within autonomous vehicles. We know that autonomous vehicles are going to have to encounter each other at highway speeds sometime in the future, and we're showcasing that on, on uh, racetracks today. Yeah. So I think we had uh, two competitions last year. Uh, one uh, was uh, in Indianapolis in November and one in, in Vegas for the CES, right? And uh, Joe, what, what was your favorite moment? Well, a favorite moment was definitely at the Autonomous Challenge at CES with all of these universities competing in a passing competition where each team, they would take turns passing each other and then they increase the speed. And in the final round, it was Polymove and Toom University. And the only way it could go is a university either uh, calls chicken and bails or they spin out or they crash. And we know Poly Move and yeah. Tomb, there's no way that they're going to call chicken. Yeah, that moment was uh, really special. So, and we can have a look at it. So we have a minute clip going on. Tomb maintains that 150 mile per hour speed. Poly Move accelerating to the outside, 168 through the corners, nearly to 169. Now they crack 169, accelerating oh. onto the front stretch and a spin from Tomb down to the infield and able to continue on. No damage to the car, but what does that mean for Toom? I think like that is over. day yeah. done. Yeah, they will not be able to pass. So the champions from Indianapolis come up just short. We reached the 150 mile per hour barrier. Poly move blasted through it and Toom did not. There is the elation in the poly move pits. They are the champions of the Autonomous Challenge at CES. Cool. That, that was really exciting, Paul. Absolutely. What you saw there was two cars going at it at the absolute edge, right? Those vehicles were traveling around 170 miles an hour and the setup of that vehicle probably can't go any faster than 175 or so. Wow. So Real just, just like, you know, the best human drivers in, in Formula One or IndyCar, you had a robot driver that was able to run the car on the edge uh, and that requires the absolute best technology wow. to make that possible. Yeah, talking about technology, let's go a little bit behind the scenes uh, of this technology. So. What's the development process of something like that that is really able to reach such a limit, right? And what's the role of the cloud, Joe? Sure. The, so for the Indy Autonomous Challenge, you have the support of these industry partners, people like Apex AI, uh, Open Robotics, the Autoware Foundation, the Eclipse Foundation, and others. And so we developed this base vehicle software uh, on the AWS uh, using uh, ROS2. And so you've got all this industry collaboration around that. And for Apex AI, we do all of this development doing native parity, right? So doing things like AWS Graviton2 so we can target ARM uh, ECUs in the cars for the computers that our customers use. And, and the cloud was essential. I mean, having cloud partners like AWS make this competition possible. If you take the German team, for example, uh, they were operating a 24-hour development process. Wow. Uh, throughout the summer of 2021, they were running the car in Indianapolis, Indiana during the day with, with team members here. Then they would take two, three terabytes of data off the vehicle after each run, push it to the cloud, and then a team in Germany would work 
through the nighttime uh, yeah. to, to get that uh, technology forward, uh, bring that algorithm back to the United States, and they'd try it again the next day. And so you need that kind of global platform yeah. to do this, this type of technology yeah. development, and the cloud is essential for that. Yeah, it's a big uh, distributed big loop uh, all around, all over the place. So that's lawful. Yes, yeah, surely a place where AWS can help with the global, with this global presence for sure. But uh, Joe, I remember one of your decks talking about 200 mile per hour ROS, right? So that was a phenomenal deck. I really liked it. So, what's the tech stack and that is used in this uh, in these cars or it's based, right? Uh, it's the base stack for, for yeah. the cars to communicate and stuff. So in the Autonomous Challenge at its core, this is a software contest. They're running identical cars, identical physical cars. And for the base vehicle software, um, what we and others in the community have worked together to uh, bring about is it's Open Robotics ROS2 with the middlewares of the Eclipse Cyclone DDS with the built-in Isterix zero copy. Uh, all of these are things that we contribute to. And then this base software, what the universities do is they take that and they take it from software that's capable of a yellow flag lap to race winning software. So they develop the algorithms, they develop all their additional uh, capabilities on top of that. Yeah, definitely. It's super interesting. The industry is given to the university, but is receiving back and support. For example, I think it's uh, this idea of having a standardized base right, for the mm -hmm. team to compete and building their added value on top of it, each of them, right? It's, uh, it's an interesting teaching for the industry as well. But I assume there are many others, right, coming? Absolutely. There's, there's short-term improvements where you, you see a, a component or a piece of software that is having a problem keeping up with the use case, you know, running at 150, mm -hmm. 170 miles an hour. Uh, and we've seen uh, suppliers make firmware updates that they then push out into the commercial realm. There you go. And then you have kind of the longer-term benefit, and that is using uh, the India Autonomous Challenge as literally a high-speed feedback loop with yeah. continuous improvement, not just on one component, but on the whole system architecture and how these companies and universities can work together, uh, leveraging as much as possible open source to get these learnings out there to the broader world. Definitely love open source. Right, Joe? And there's some very specific things because of India Autonomous Challenge that are now there in the public. So things like um, with all these LIDARs and cameras, all these high bandwidth sensors running at very high frame rates, very high frequency, um, the data recorder that's built into ROS2 is just not fast enough to cope. So Apex AI with AWS and other friends in the community, we renovated it to make it six times faster so we could record all of that. And so these improvements from IEC are already being used in our customer projects, they're already going into the cars, the trucks, the robo-taxis, and the tractors. Yeah, that's fantastic. Seeing open source technology developed through the competition and going into real products, that's absolutely phenomenal. So, Paul, what's next? Very excited to share that the Indie Autonomous Challenge is going to continue on for, for years to come. We knew that we needed to get these cars going faster, and so in April, uh, Polymove, the team that won in Las Vegas, uh, brought their vehicle to the Kennedy Space Center and we set a new speed record. Wow. Uh, we expect that that speed will be carried on to events at Texas Motor Speedway in November. And then we'll be back at CES at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway in January. So Joe, your prophecy about 200 <laughs> miles per hour became a reality, essentially. <laughs> that's self-fulfilling. Uh, that's fantastic. And, you know, we're also going to be announcing a lot of new partnerships and, and new sponsors coming on board. AWS as, as a cloud partner and working with you uh, deeply on things like digital twin technology. So how can we have exciting events, but also continue to push the state of the art forward from a technology commercialization yeah. standpoint? That's fantastic. And fostering the ecosystem around it. It's really phenomenal. So, Joe, what's your take on that? I... It's just phenomenal that with the IEC, these contributions, these improvements to the open robotics, ROS, you know, ROS is used in all industries. So these improvements are already going into, already seen in automotive, agriculture, manufacturing, mining, drones, autonomous delivery, uh, and space. Uh, so it's really this collaborative effort for the program which brings together the entire industry and to bring the world forward and really show the power of open source. Thank you very much. This is really very interesting and I can't wait to be at the next race with you guys. So thank you so much for, uh, for your time today and just good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. So how uh, cutting edge 
sport competition help industries to innovate. Joining me for uh, this uh, Around the Corner session is uh, Mahendra Bairagi. Hi, Mahendra. Hey, I'm absolutely happy to be here. Yeah, it's really awesome, you know, talking about uh, how sports can really help to innovate. And uh, we can start with motorsports, right? Do you have examples of it? Oh, yeah. I was at the IAC, the Indy Autonomous Challenge, with my son. And we saw these vehicles going 120 miles per hour and more. And that was just amazing. And we have customers like uh, Formula One, NASCAR. The, with, for NASCAR, we are helping them monetize the, the media archives. For Formula One, there are 20 plus events globally. Wow. It's yeah. a really where one of the situations where you appreciate AWS global scale. Probably. Yeah. And at, at the at IAC, you saw how much data yeah. these vehicles are producing. There's enormous data these vehicles producing. And we need to process all this data coming from these different regions. So we are using AWS analytics services and machine learning services to innovate and produce some amazing stats for Formula One customers. That's awesome because you can keep the you know viewers engaged and explain them what's going on. Yeah, and then if you look at the other industry, we have wide setup customers in a global sports tech industry. There are right owners, there are leagues, the NFL, NHL, PGA, MLSC. Wow. You know, there is, there's so much going on there. Yeah. We have stadium owners like OVG, you know, it's a big market. Yeah, so how big is it? It's a uh, thirty-one billion dollars at least uh, by twenty twenty-four. Wow. That's really a big number. And yeah. why is AWS so invested in sports? That's a good question. See, the sports is so easy. It's very easy to explain. Uh, more than ninety percent uh, of the world's population feels attracted to at least one sports. They know the sports rules, so it's easy for us to uh, innovate in a sports and then use that technology. Yeah. So we have seen some other customers outside of sports, they're using sports as a training ground wow. for their industry. So sports as a way to push the frontier of technology innovation. Yes, yes. and if you look at some of the new technologies, the AR, VR, the digital twin. You know, the digital twin is not just for players, it's also for the stadiums. So the stadiums are innovating using the digital twin. And when it comes to the innovation, it's not just a new tech, it's also the simplification. Oh. So during COVID, uh, some of our the media producers, they came to us and they, they are like, why not, we cannot have people in one place physically. So we helped them move their production to the cloud and now they can actually do the production remotely in a cloud. And then uh, going back to the F1, we are also helping them with uh, the redesigning their cars. True, I think it's just uh, for the new season. They produce yes. this virtual car that uh, the teams have to start with. Yeah, so we have a very good, uh, amazing expertise around the, the IOTs, the sensors. And we are using this technology, not just for like F1 and others. We are also using this technology uh, to attain sustainability goals wow. and then carbon neutrality for our stadium owners. Wow, that's, that's really fantastic and fascinating. So thank you so much. Uh, it's been awesome having you here today, Mahendra. Thanks for having me. The India Autonomous Challenge and the DARPA Grand Challenge demonstrate the power of community. Pushing the boundaries of autonomous driving and bringing safer cars to the market. Let's close this episode with three key takeaways. First, passion drives innovation. When you consider the number of student teams coming together to develop software that races an Indy car speed nearing 200 miles per hour. That's a pace well beyond the normal course of business. Next, not only is the Indy challenge about developing autonomous vehicle software, but it's also about creating ADAS functions that allow humans to push their vehicles further and faster. Finally, collaboration and competition go hand in hand. AWS and all the other ecosystem players contribute to the open source community. And that creates a platform where everybody can add value and then compete. We'll take another look at the drivers of transformation on all things automotive. And see you at the next race.